and uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to, to everyone. Um, thank you, first of all, to the RWSN as well as the JMP team for this opportunity to present to you today on translating international SDG targets and indicators to the national level. Um, thank you as well to all of the participants who have joined, and uh, I'm looking forward to a stimulating discussion after the presentation. So let me get right into it. Um, so as you all know, we are already a few years into the Sustainable Development Agenda as laid out in the Transforming Our World document, the resolution that was adopted by the General Assembly in September 2015. Um, in the transition from the MDGs to the SDGs and in the development of the 2030 Agenda, um, there has been a significant effort to identify what has worked uh, what has worked well, as well as challenges um, with the MDGs. And one challenge uh, that has been identified has been um, that uh, the MDGs have been perceived as uh, international benchmarks uh, rather than looking at local conditions and context, and which do not necessarily take into account complexities of the development process. So the development of the 2030 Agenda has been much more uh, country-driven, uh, bottom-up rather than top-down. There's also been a significant expansion in the goals, targets, and indicators. So within the SDGs, we have 17 goals, 169 targets, and 230 global indicators. Um, and this represents not only an expansion in the scope of uh, what is being covered, um, but as well um, uh, the, the SDGs are much more ambitious compared to the MDGs. So specifically with regards to Goal 6, uh, the dedicated goal uh, for water, um, ensuring the availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all, we have, of course, the targets 6.1 and 6.2, uh, which build on the MDG targets on drinking water and sanitation, but are looking uh, also at the higher levels of service. There are also um, the targets 6.3 to 6.6, addressing the broader water context, as emphasized at Rio plus 20. And in addition to that, we have the uh, what are called the, Im the means of implementation targets 6A and 6B, which are looking at the enabling environment uh, that would allow countries to make progress towards the outcome targets. So 6.1 and 6.2 are under the custodianship of JMP, uh, 6.3 to 6.6. Um, under a uh, consortium of UN agencies um, under GEMI, and 6A and 6B, um, WHO through the GLASS initiative is one of the co-custodians of these two targets with uh, UN Environment and OECD. So in terms of global monitoring, um, we have the WHO-UNICEF Joint Monitoring Program uh, looking uh, specifically at targets 6.1 and 6.2. Um, and since the MDG period, the JMP has been monitoring the WASH outcomes. So the program has been in existence for over 25 years. There is also the UN Water GLASS, or Global Analysis and Assessment of Sanitation and Drinking Water initiative, uh, which is implemented by WHO. And we monitor the enabling environment for the WASH sector looking at elements of governance, monitoring systems, human resources, and financing in the WASH sector. Um, so for GLASS, we've completed four cycles of data collection, plus a pilot in 2008. So in fact, this year, we are welcoming um, 10 years of, of GLASS. And in fact, we are launching our fifth cycle of data collection this summer, which I will come back to a little bit later. Um, so I think there has probably been some confusion at all levels, including in countries, regarding um, the fact that these global targets um, under the SDGs are aspirational. Um, so, uh, so I think there has been confusion and I think some 
countries have interpreted this as the SDGs are requiring countries to achieve universal safely managed coverage, which is not the case. So if we look specifically at paragraph 55 of this Transforming Our World document, um, in the portion highlighted in yellow, it says targets are defined as aspirational and global, with each government setting its own national targets guided by the global level of ambition, but taking into account national circumstances. It says as well that each government will also decide how these aspirational and global targets should be incorporated into national planning processes, policies, and strategies. So it states very clearly here that the global targets are aspirational and that each country is expected to set their own targets based on their own national context. So in terms of how this can or should be done, um, there's a need to consider the implications of the SDG targets, um, considering the challenges and opportunities for rural and urban wash services at country level. Um, the objective is really to set realistic targets and there is very much a need to balance priorities and plans with available resources, notably financial and human resources. And there is also a need to balance the ambition of the SDGs with the reality in many countries that there are significant unserved populations to whom services need to be extended. So here are just some examples of uh, national or subnational targets. Um, it doesn't always or necessarily make sense for countries to set uh, safely managed targets, uh, just because this is what is referred to in the SDGs. Um, it's quite likely that many countries will set targets for individual elements, such as open defecation, sanitation, hygiene, uh, fecal sludge and wastewater treatment. Um, so here are some possible examples of national targets and indicators. And uh, some of these may feed directly or align directly with global monitoring uh, definitions through JMP and some may not, and um, that's perfectly okay. So just an example from Indonesia, we have on the left here uh, for sanitation, the JMP definitions of the ladder rungs. Um, and on the right is uh, the national definitions for Indonesia. And as you can see, there, there is a, an alignment of uh, the various rungs, um, but certainly some differences in the definitions uh, notably, notably at the basic level uh, where Indonesia has specified specific types of facilities. Uh, but we do sort of see um, the correspondence between the two as well as a clear definition um, at, at each level. So just to demonstrate that uh, there is a, while there is a need to define national targets and uh, indicators, uh, it doesn't need to be completely the same as what the JMP has defined. At the same time, uh, we do think that it makes sense to clearly define uh, the national indicators to avoid confusion and if possible uh, to see if there's, an if there's a possibility of aligning with the JMP ladders. Um, In terms of the work that the GLASS team will be doing in this area in the coming months, uh, we have launched an in-depth policy and targets review in seven countries to look closely at water and sanitation policies, targets and plans, and their alignment with SDG 6. And we will be carrying through this focus on policies and targets in the upcoming GLASS cycle. Uh, which will be launching in July 2018, so in a few weeks' time. So GLASS has collected in the past uh, and will be continuing to collect data on uh, national target setting. Um, so we will be continuing this work, but basically elaborating this further and looking in more detail um, to be able to provide an overview of how countries are responding to and aligning with the SDGs. And in particular, since 
the SDGs uh, focus on safely managed services, countries may be re-examining their policies and plans. And so this review will be a tool for countries to assess their plans and policies. Um, and in view of increasing the focus on strengthening the enabling environment for the WASH sector, GLASS will be collecting information on the target setting process and aims to monitor progress of national target setting. So um, in line with uh, the 2017 GLASS report, which focused on finance, we are exploring elements of the enabling environment in greater depth. And so the 2019 report will be focused on policies, plans, and targets. So just very quickly, uh, the 2019 GLASS report will have a thematic focus on policies, plans, and national targets. And in particular, Chapter 2 will be looking at this uh, national target setting uh, uh, issue. So uh, in this chapter, we'll be looking at processes for national target setting and target monitoring. We'll be looking at national coverage targets as well as progress. Uh, and we'll be looking at national wash targets and progress for urban rural sanitation, urban rural drinking water hygiene, et cetera. So some of the key questions that we'll be looking at are how are countries setting their national wash targets? What are the stakeholders involved? What targets are countries setting and how are they defined? What progress are countries reporting on national targets? How is progress being monitored, as well as to what extent are SDGs being incorporated into national targets? We'll also be looking at how they are aligned with uh, JMP uh, monitoring ladders and definitions, and we'll be working closely, of course, with the JMP team on this aspect. So just in conclusion, um, in terms of key take-home messages, um, Countries are expected to define their own national targets and plans using SDGs as an inspiration. We would very much uh, like for countries to set ambitious, but at the same time achievable uh, targets, uh, which are realistic. Uh, so uh, progressive realization uh, is, a, is a, would be important to ensure. Um, in addition, uh, this will require having a, a clear roadmap of costs and planning through policies, plans, and strategies, um, exploring available sources of funding as well as new sources uh, in order to be able to achieve uh, these national targets. And this will, of course, require strengthening national regulation monitoring systems um, and uh, the JMP and GLASS teams, as well as other partners, very much do aim to support countries in this endeavor. So thank you very much.